Dear students, I am Dr. Ali Sabour, Professor of Vascular Surgery at Shams Medical School, and this is a short presentation about toe amputation. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to identify the indications for toe amputation, the different types of toe amputation, and outline the steps of toe amputation. Toe amputation is indicated in the following clinical situations. A gangrenous toe, which is a dead toe, with good foot vascularity. Uh, separative foot infections associated with the gangrenous toe as a part of the infection drainage. Deep toe infection with severe osteomyelitis. This is a case of massive tissue destruction. Again, crush trauma with massive tissue destruction. And for some orthopedic deformities to treat and avoid complications such as hammer toe with a phalanx tip ulcer. This is actually a relative indication. You should not attempt amputation of an ischemic or a gangrenous toe in an ischemic limb before correcting ischemia. The problem of a patient with toe gangrene due to the occlusion of a major artery will not be solved by toe amputation because the amputation stump will remain ischemic and will soon be gangrenous as well. However, if the gangrenous toe in an ischemic foot is associated with deep infection that needs drainage, you can remove the toe as a part of drainage that should be followed by prompt revascularization. Preoperative preparation. In any toe amputation, thorough assessment of the neurovascular status of both limbs is essential. That is to discover associated chronic ischemia and severe neuropathy. Remember that you are treating a patient and not a toe. So evaluate comorbidities to be considered in the postoperative patient's management. Do not forget to take an informed consent for the procedure you are going to do. Explain why you are why you are going to amputate and the expected uh, limited morbidity that may result. Perform amputation at a level that makes anatomical sense. General principles in toe amputation. In general, the aim of the surgeon is to conserve as much tissue possible and preserve function. Each case should be judged on its own merits. Partial amputation of a toe keeps adjacent toes in a normal alignment. The big toe is of a particular importance in this aspect. The head of the first metatarsal is of great importance in weight bearing and every effort should be made to spare it. Whenever possible, amputation through a bone is preferred than amputation through a joint, which is called disarticulation, because this preserves the attachment of the flexor and extensor tendons at the base of the phalanx, thus maximizing the power retained at the stump. Opened versus closed amputations. Close the skin in clean and clean contaminated operations. If you close the wounds, consider prophylactic antibiotics. Remember, avoid tension while you close the wound. With severe infection, leave the skin opened for wound, for wound drainage and dressing, and it may heal by secondary intention or you may close it later by secondary suture. Types of toe amputations. You can recognize four types of toe amputation based on the extent of amputation. Partial toe amputation, that is removal of the middle and distal phalanx. Complete 
to amputation, including the proximal phalanx, and is better done sparing its space. To this articulation, any amputation done through the joint, and finally, ray amputation, which includes removal of the head of the metatarsal bone as well. Anesthesia. In diabetic patients with severe peripheral neuropathy, no anesthesia is required. In non-diabetic patients, adequate anesthesia is required. We usually use regional anesthesia in the form of ring anesthesia or ankle block. With severe infection and preserved sensation, the patient may need the general or spinal anesthesia. Several incisions can be used. The most popular is the racket incision. For amputation of the first and fifth toes, we prefer to orient the handle of the racket on the medial or lateral surface of the respected metatarsal head. For the second, third and fourth toes, the handle of the racket is oriented longitudinally along the dorsal surface of the digit. The rationale is to keep the scar free from pressure. This picture shows the racket incision and how it is closed. As you can see, for the second toe amputation, the scar is placed on the dorsum. This keeps the scar free of pressure. Using the voler or the plantar skin for stump coverage provides a thicker and a more sensitive coverage than using the dorsal skin. Ensure that closure is tension free. This is facilitated by making a long plantar flap. Tendons and bones are divided. Amputation through the bone is preferred than amputation through the joint. Skin is closed without tension in clean and clean contaminated wounds. In the presence of infection, necrotic tissue is debrided. The pus usually tracks along the tendon sheath. This should be observed, discovered, and drained. Microbiology samples are sent for culture and sensitivity if you find pus. In markedly infected wounds, the skin is left opened for daily dressing. It can be left to heal by secondary intention or closed later with secondary sutures. Now, this is a particular type of amputation, which is the ray amputation. It involves amputation of the toe along with all or part of the corresponding metatarsal head. Although a single isolated ray amputation sometimes proved durable, multiple ray amputations narrows the foot extensively and creates biomechanical instability. This is an example in this picture of a diabetic patient with second metatarsal head that was displaced, resulting in an abnormal pressure point, preventing healing of this plantar ulcer. The plantar incision was extended to include the plantar ulcer and removal of the metatarsal head relieved the pressure. If you decide primary closure, consider prophylactic or therapeutic antibiotics. If the skin is closed, weight bearing is completely prohibited until adequate healing is observed. Stitches are removed with evidence of complete skin healing that usually occurs within 7 to 10 days. If the stump is left opened, that is usually because of evident contamination, pus or infection, the wound is daily dressed Empirical antibiotics are given until culture sensitivity results appear. These are words to remember. Consent. Ring anesthesia if needed. Racket incision handed on the foot dorsum. Ray amputation, metatarsal head included. Big toe. Metatarsal head is important for biomechanical stability. 
primary closure for clean and clean contaminated wounds, consider antibiotics. Weight bearing is prohibited if you close the wound until adequate healing is observed. Leave the skin opened until you clear infection. Remember culture and sensitivity. Thank you.